Welcome to our new video. This is our third episode in the series in which we search for a perfect Linux distribution. In the first part, back at the end of November 2023, we showed our distribution of choice Manjaro Linux as it is, with no additional software sources turned on, such as Flatpak or AUR. Then in February 2024, we showed the way Manjaro Linux worked with the first additional software sources added, Flatpak support. Now in the third episode, we want to show you the way the system behaved with the AUR support added. You'll see how it went during the video, so stay tuned. Soon after the second episode, in Manjaro's official software store, we turned on the AUR support, a vast collection of software apart from the official Manjaro repositories, including many third-party applications. So, to find out how it works, we decided to install DaVinci Resolve, a robust video editor. And the thing you need to know is that when installing an app from AUR, you need to literally build it via Manjaro's software manager. In our case, it meant way longer installation times. In the case of DaVinci Resolve, believe it or not, it took more than 24 hours for the app to be built and installed. Now, it may be up to our modest hardware or whatever, but we simply wanted to show you the way the installation via AUR worked in our case. Maybe the video editor wasn't the best example, so we decided to install Google Chrome via AUR to check out how it worked. And the installation was fine, but the problem we have had with Manjaro from the very beginning persisted. After every new installation or update, the system would lag and stutter for a time, as if it needed some time to settle down on our hardware. That's why we put so much emphasis on updates, because they are a crucial thing in the world of rolling release distributions, since they tend to break operating systems. Speaking of updates, along the way the system offered us to update Edge and Vivaldi, the browsers we had installed from different software sources. And despite the update process being successfully finished, the update shield in the system tray area was still glowing red for some reason. And then, in the middle of March, the software manager announced a sizable update, around 460 megabytes. It offered an update to a newer version of the KDE Plasma desktop. However, it was a shift from version 5.27.10 to 5.27.11, and not to the brand new KDE Plasma 6 version that had recently been released. And again, after a big update, the system lagged. As you can see here, the Vivaldi web browser started very slowly, and now and then the system felt almost unusable. Still, after several restarts, the system went back to normal, more or less working as expected. Another thing we have noticed along the way is that the update of apps installed via AUR took longer than those installed from the official repositories. In our case, at least, the Google Chrome update took around 8 minutes regularly, and after the update, the app usually took longer to start and needed some time to settle down on the hardware. We had instances when we couldn't finish updates via Software Manager and we would have to dip our toes in the command line. We are not sure if this would suit so-called ordinary users. 
when it comes to updates. One of the issues we had was that software manager would show that the updates were successfully finished. However, Edge and Tenacity, both apps installed via Flatpak, were yet to be updated. And at last, in the middle of May, the system offered a huge upgrade, this time around to the long-awaited KDE Plasma 6 series. It was 2.1 GB in size, and the upgrade lasted almost an hour. After the restart, everything seemed to be fine, and our custom taskbar was reset to the defaults. However, very soon we had two task managers at the bottom of the screen, the new one belonging to KDE Plasma 6 and the old one from KDE Plasma 5. We were even able to click the task manager in the background. To resolve the issue, the only solution was to choose the default breath theme anew and reset the task manager to its default state. Then we had to pin again our favorite apps to task manager. Again, after a huge upgrade, the system worked slowly for a time. Now, KDE Plasma 6 was announced as a huge upgrade, but in our experience, it works more or less the same as its predecessor, KDE Plasma 5. It is really polished and looks even more professional, but we couldn't spot any groundbreaking changes in terms of the workflow or user interface. And last but not least, we still had issues with updates. For instance, sometimes Software Manager wouldn't accept the administrative password when updating apps installed from Flatpak, and the next day it would. So, all in all, we were struggling with Manjaro KDE now and then all along our journey. Our intention wasn't to be nitpicking, but only to present the major issues we have had with the operating system in question. Will we keep it on our SSD drive? Well, not really. If you are fine with intermittent issues like updates or system stuttering now and then, then Manjaro can be your distribution of choice. That has its advantages, like offering a regularly updated system and apps. But that's exactly its weakness at the same time, as we have shown. To answer the question from the title of the series, is this the perfect Linux system we've been waiting for? No, not yet. We will obviously keep on searching. Thank you for watching the video. If you find it useful, please give us a like, share it and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.